In this video, we're going to talk about food addiction, disordered eating patterns, and food restriction from a five element perspective. Sit tight. Welcome back to another video. My name is Jan Palco. Today we're going to talk all about food and eating, but more from the aspect of food addiction and overeating and undereating from the perspective of the five elements. Now I'm going to get into each specific element type and how it relates to food. Um, so, you know, if you think about food, it is the nourishment, main source of nourishment for our body. It makes cheat. Okay? And it sends uh, all the nutrients to all the limbs of our body and to our organs and helps us function. So when we are overeating or undereating to the extremes, we don't supply the body with that nourishment. So what happens not only starts to affect us on a physical level, but also, also on the mental, emotional, and spiritual level. Okay, you'll see people's spirits be affected drastically when they have something like an eating disorder or a binge eating cycle kind of disorder, that type of thing. So let's get into it. If you know nothing about the five elements, I suggest you check out uh, some of my other videos. I've done a lot on each element type what the five elements are, how they relate to you and your body. But basically, we know there's five elements out in nature, fire, earth, metal, water, wood. And this is taking from the Taoist perspective, all of my videos here. Um, we have the five elements within us, ourselves, all five of them. And what that means is that they correspond to different organ systems of our body, different um, correspondences with emotions, with flavors, with sounds, with all these different aspects of ourselves. And we also have a, a primary element, which is kind of like our constitution, what we're born with. And this relates a lot to our personality, our innate traits and strengths and abilities and stuff like that. And a lot of times we try to be not who we are, right? We're trying to be a different element. Even though we have all five, we have one or two that are more dominant and then we have weaker ones that we can, you know, they all work together. But a lot of times we're trying in life, we're trying to be who we're not. And this is, you know, what this video is gonna be about related to food and nourishment and how we can develop these patterns of food addiction and overeating and binging and really restricting ourselves, okay? So let's get into it. Like I said, check out some of my other videos Videos. I'm going to be putting out a, um, a quick ebook guide on the five elements, so stay tuned for that as well. But everything's going to be in the description box below. So we're talking about the five elements. Um, let's talk about first food addiction and overeating, okay? Eating too much. This can be binging, this can be emotional eating, all kinds of stuff. I would say, in my opinion, the element type that is prone most to this type of pattern is gonna be your earth, okay? When you think of the earth element, it's about nourishment, okay? The earths are the caretakers, they're the mother archetype, okay? They're the uh, nurturer in other people's lives. People feel comfortable around them. And the thing is that society doesn't necessarily value earth enough and their slower pace and their ability to be very kind to, to people. And, um, you know, the organs associated with the earth element are the spleen and the stomach. So they have a lot, it has a lot to do with digestion, which is a lot to do with food, what you're taking in, right? Absorbing certain things into your body. And, um, you know, this is why a lot of earth people are prone to digestive issues out of balance or they're not taking care of themselves. So earth types can be prone to emotional eating and overeating in the aspect that they have a tendency to crave sweet foods um, and also the societal pressure to look a certain way, okay? Here's the thing, earth element types, their body types, they have, um, they're just a little heavier than some of the other elements. Not overweight, not obese, but a little heavier, meaning they may have bigger calves, bigger wrists, um, bigger bones, kind of. They're strong because they're the mother figure, the caretaker, okay? People feel comfortable, um, this kind of cushiony, soft feeling. And there's nothing wrong with that. Earth is a beautiful, beautiful element, but in society, we value like skinny, 
obsession with everything. So an earth element type may feel the pressure to look a certain way. And what happens with this is that they try to restrict themselves of food going on fad diets or, you know, whatever's popular at the time. And they can get into these binge cycles because what happens is their, their not only body, um, but also their spirit is constantly fighting with them. It doesn't want to be this way. It wants to hold on to that extra weight because that's who they are. And a lot of times earth gets into this emotional state of not liking who they are. So they'll be emotionally eating. Okay. Binging on sweet foods, going into these patterns of like dieting for a week and then binging on the weekends because their body is, they're always going against themselves and their body. So that is, is, you know, really earth and earth is about grounding too. So let me talk about something called artificial or false earth too, for a second. A lot of people have false earth where they look like they're earthy. Um, and this is a lot of people out in society. They're heavy, right? They carry a lot of weight in their stomach area in the front. This can be false earth because what is fat do? It protects us. It grounds us eating certain things, um, grounds, the spirit grounds the body. So sometimes or oftentimes people are, are, um, they seem like they're earthy, but that's not their constitution. If you know what I mean, like they're holding on to fat for reasons other than this is just who they are. And, um, they're, they're just naturally like this. They're holding on to fat more for protection, um, for grounding the body in some capacity, maybe escaping from something in their lives. Okay. So that's why, um, other people get into these cycles of overeating. So that's going to be your earth. Um, so this is the one that's prone to more overeating. If we're talking about under eating and restriction, I would say the two, top elements that are best at this are going to be your wood and your metal. Okay. Wood. Wood is just naturally lean, athletic. They are the doers of the world, the warriors. Okay. They, um, is all about competing and being the best. These are like your CrossFit people that are always, um, always active. So they are really good at restricting their diets. They can do it. They have a lot of energy to be able to, to, um, just withhold, or a lot of times they just don't eat. They forget to eat because they're so active. Okay. So that's going to be your, your wood who is, um, always competing with other people and competing with themselves. They're the ones who are like, I need to get the, the six pack, you know, and, and, um, you know, do all these things and be the best and get to the top of the mountain. Metal on the other hand is, um, they may restrict themselves of food a lot of times because they're all about self-control. Okay. Self ideal. They're the most, uh, they're the hardest on themselves, the metal element, I would say, because they have these certain, like I said, ideals of how things are supposed to go, or maybe they're, they're very organized. They form a plan in their head of what they need to do and nothing can stop them. They're not going to stray. If they stray or get distracted, they're going to feel really terrible about themselves. They're going to feel like they don't like being out of control. They like being in control at all times and organized. And these are the types that can develop things like, um, anorexia. Okay. They can be really, really, um, really too intense on the, the self-control aspect of everything, of food, of lurking, looking a certain way. Um, they have certain values that they, they must stand by. Okay. So, so metal is going to be, um, really prone to that kind of stuff. And then you have your fires and your waters. Let's talk about fire for a second. So fire elements, they are the fun ones, the playful, the, we don't want to get too serious. We want to enjoy our life and have fun, but they also have this, um, you know, the, the emotion associated with fire is joy and has to do with the organ of the heart system. So they're always going to have this aspect where they, um, need to stay attractive to other people. Okay. They need to stay desirable to other people. So they may get into states of, um, under eating 
to look a certain way because as they're getting older, maybe they're like, ooh, I don't feel as sexy or attractive anymore. And they have to keep that, okay? They have to keep that. And fire by nature is not gonna be one to eat heavy grounding foods because they don't wanna be grounded. They hate being bored, they hate being grounded, so they're going to maybe um, keep themselves on the high and eat certain things or drink alcohol or drink a lot of caffeine or like, uh, you know, dark coffees and things like that to keep them up here flying high, okay? Having fun in the moment. They don't wanna eat heavy stuff like Earth does that's gonna ground them and bring them down because they're not comfortable there. They're comfortable in this fiery kind of state, okay? Um, and then you have water. So water can be either or, I would say. I was thinking on water a lot because they're not the ones that are, you know, gonna necessarily be one side or the other, but waters can be more introverted. They're not exactly the social butterfly. They're very deep, they're philosophical, okay? Um, the archetype for water is gonna be your sage. So they're very intellectual. So a lot of times the water element may feel pressure just out in society to keep up with like their peers or people who are going out and, and drinking and having a good time and doing a lot. But water can't do a lot. They need a lot of rest and recharge. So this is what happens when water element um, you know, tries to be who they're not. They may use caffeine, alcohol, certain things to rev them up, to give them a false fire, an artificial fire, right? It's like um, somebody who's watery, is drinking a lot of coffee, drinking a lot of caffeine to give them that they're trying to be fiery, right? But it's, it's a temporary fire. It's just the high from the caffeine, from the drug in your system. But eventually they're gonna come back down into themselves. That's not really who they are. Um, so they may do that. And then on the other side, um, you know, they may, uh, you know, they're very deep thinkers. So they may use food as an escape. So this is where the overeating may come into emotional eating. They may use food as an escape to uh, escape their deep thoughts, okay? They may have a lot of fears, a lot of things that are running through their heads, okay? About how maybe they're supposed to be in the world, right? And they may use food um, to try and nurture that because food is going to nurture somebody in some aspect, not just on a physical level, but you have to look at it from the mental, emotional, and spiritual level. So the other thing I want to talk about is intuitive eating. So a lot of the more yin elements here um, that are trying to be, say, you know, yin element is trying to be more wood or more fire. We see this a lot in society where people are going on diets that are not the best for their bodies. So say a water, a water, um, you know, their body is calling for things like soup broths and cooked foods and stuff. But if they hop on the trend and they're like, ooh, I'm going to go on an all raw diet and I'm going to exercise six days a week and go crazy, blah, blah, blah. Then what happens? They end up getting sick or, or something because their body doesn't want the raw food, like it's not right for their system. And they're the type that um, they can't go all out and do maybe hardcore like hit workouts every day because their body needs the rest and recharge. And if they ignore that fact and they don't listen to the intuitive little voice calling them like, hey, this is what I want you to do. I want you to rest. I want you to eat this certain way. I want you to eat you know, warm, more warming foods, right? Because you're very yin in nature, um, whereas Something like a fire is like all about like the scorched kind of like barbecue kind of flavors. Um, they're gonna feel it because they need the recharge, okay? Unlike some of the other elements. Um, so you have to understand that a lot of times we just hop on trends or we do diets because our friends are like, hey, you should try this. But think about it. You're totally different right? You're a unique individual. You're a different person. And this is why I talk about the five elements, because even though each element has like a certain archetype, you're a blend of all of these, but it's like you, you can kind of pick up what's your, what's your primary. Like, are you always competing? Are you always like this really athletic on the go need to be outside outdoorsy type? Are you always like party goer? I want, I want to live in the moment. I want to have fun. Or are you more like, I just want to like, 
be at home with my family on my comfortable couch, you know, nurture other people um, or metal, you know, do I have really high values that I stick by? Like I like things organized. I like things clean in my house or water. Like I just want to sit home and read some books, you know? So the thing is we try to be who we're not. And this goes for eating. And this is why um, so many people have gone through or are or gar going through um, some sort of like disordered eating pattern in their lives of overeating, under eating, because they're not living tr true to their nature. They're not accepting who they really are. Okay. Like if you're an earth person, you're like, Ooh, I don't want to be big. I don't want to be big. But if you're naturally, you just have like large bones. This is a benefit to you because it's protecting you. It's mother nature naturally giving you that protection. So if God forbid, you get sick or something, you might do better than somebody who has like a smaller frame, right? Who can't handle it. Mother nature gave you this for a reason. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, that's what I want to say. So, um, just take a look at, you know, what you're doing in your life. If you're struggling with something right now, is it because you're trying to follow in the footsteps of what other people are doing, right? Are you trying to ground yourself with food in, in some way? Are you trying to protect yourself from somebody or something in your life, right? Are you escaping from something? So this is where it can be really, really helpful. Um, but I just want you to know that, um, it's okay to be who you are right? It's okay to be who you are in this world and do your own thing. Listen to your own intuition over what's in the magazines or on TV or social media, right? Because your intuition is going to guide you how to be the healthiest, um, most balanced human being in your life. All right. Not to say we can't add in, um, you know, bits of each of these elements to help, you know, boost them. But don't try to um, step into the role, I guess I'm trying to say, of another constitution, another person's blueprint, and not accept your own blueprint, right? That nature gave you, that the universe gave you, right? Um, so anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Like I said, check out some of my other videos on the five elements. Um, I will be putting out an ebook on a, a quick guide to all the, the five elements to give you a nice, you know, summary of everything together in, in one quick, um, one quick read for you. <laughs> but anyway, subscribe, share with your friends, and I will see you on the next video until next time. Peace.